So recently at our church, we put together our live stream production setup. It's a multi-camera ability live stream. And in this video, I wanted to break through uh, how we do so with the type of cameras, the type of switchers, all the way to like the pro presenter setup. And this setup could actually be interchanged with whatever cameras you wanna use, but this will give you a good baseline to how to set it up for your live stream or live events. Let's go. You gotta just press record. Hey, what is up? I'm Omar, it's Corey with Think Media, helping you build your influence with online video. And on this channel, sometimes we do tech gear reviews. Other times we talk about various setups for different scenarios, just like this one. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. Now the church that a lot of us here at Think Media attend in Las Vegas is called City Light Church. And when the pandemic hit and the shutdown happened, we went from going to in live, you know, in-person services to pre-recorded services. And we wanted to make sure that when we started in-person services that we were able to go live, but still have the quality of those pre-recorded services. And so obviously there's a little bit less margin of error that can take place, but having a setup uh, from communicating with other people on the cameras to also having wireless cameras on gimbals so you could switch and get super dynamic shots. So more than anything, just listen to like the setup i'm just going to break through the cameras and how we actually run cables and maybe you can get an idea of how it can work in your space or for your event so we are running four cinema cameras they're canon cameras and we have two c300 mark ii's and then we have two c200s both of these canon cameras are incredible because they just produce a great image straight out of the camera and uh, a lot of the times, you know, that cinema camera actually has like a look, you know, if you're watching, if you watch a lot of live production and stuff like that, it usually just looks better because of uh, the type of cameras that's being used. And so there is a difference between DSLR, mirrorless, and now cinema cameras. And so we use those cameras to capture essentially the service. Um, and then the fifth camera is actually a roaming camera that is on a gimbal. And we actually use a Sony a7 III for that with a 24 to 70 lens and it's on a Zion crane uh, which is just a gimbal and then we're sending the signal to the switcher which I'll talk about in a second wirelessly which is cool everything else is ran from the uh, other Canon cinema cameras those have SDI cables running from the cameras to the switcher board also if you didn't know you don't want to run HDMI cords longer than about 50 feet I actually don't even want to run it longer than like 25 feet and so that's just a rule of thumb but if you are using cameras that only have HDMI cords, what you wanna do is convert your HDMI into SDI. We have uh, SDI cables running all throughout this building to be able to have the wireless video feed without it being able to cut out. And by the way, we'll post links to everything I'm mentioning and also alternatives down in the description below. So make sure you check out the description. Now, as far as the lenses go on the actual cinema cameras, we're really just using two types of lenses. So we have our 70 to 200 millimeter lens for our main you know, camera A. That is that straight on shot. Uh, that's gonna spend a lot of the time on whoever's teaching um, and also whoever's leading uh, worship or what have you. There's another side camera that we have in the front of the room that's kind of at an angle. That too, there is a 70 to 200 on that lens. So we have two cinema cameras with 70 to 200 millimeter lenses. And then we have two other cameras. One is on a motorized slider always uh, moving back and forth throughout the entire service or even like the teaching. And so it, ha it creates a dynamic and somebody doesn't have to run that slider. You don't have to do that. It just is cool that we're able to just hit go at the beginning of uh, the service and then it can run to back and forth. But that camera has a 24 to 70, 2.8. And then the other camera during uh, worship is another roamer, but it's not wireless. So that's the other C200 and that too has a 24 to 70. 2.8. All the cameras that we are using in this setup are interchangeable lens cameras. And so that means you can actually get whatever lens you actually need. So you might not need actually the 70 to 200 for that main shot. The 24 to 70 might be plenty. So it all depends on the space uh, and place that your room is. The more you can zoom in, the better compression and separation from your background you can actually achieve. But more than anything, definitely wanna start at that 24 to 70. And then if you wanna get even tighter, that's when you would wanna get the 70 to 200. So that is kind of like the four slash five camera setup when we're doing our worship. And that's just to let you know that we don't actually run all five cameras throughout the entire duration of that service. Uh, it's really just for worship. So we have those angles to keep the viewer online engaged. And when it cuts to the teaching, 
uh, we really are only using two different cameras. We're using that main camera uh, in the center and then we have that camera on the motorized slider moving the entire time and then so that just encourages you. But even at Grow, Grow With Video Live, that's where we're filming this right now, we've kind of taken over the church, but Grow With Video Live, we essentially had the same two camera setup. Uh, the only other third camera that we're using is to be able to talk to somebody on Zoom, but more than anything, a two angle setup for a teaching or a keynote or what have you is plenty to keep the viewer engaged and also get that uh, kind of like wide shot so people can actually see like your slides on your screen on stage or what have you. And so all that to say, all these cameras have SDI cables to include the wireless uh, transmitter going from the gimbal. They're all going to this switcher room, which I'm gonna cut to right now. All right, so we are in the switcher room. Um, and so you can see all the angles coming in from the various cameras. And then we have our switcher, which all the cameras are hooked up to, to include our, you know, pro presenter, which is the program on a Mac uh, that's sitting in the back of the room that's sending in slides or, you know, videos and assets and stuff like that, lyrics to the songs we're singing. Um, but as you can see, I'm wearing comms. You know, the person running switcher, it's very important that they can communicate to everyone who's on a camera to let them know that their camera is on standby and that it's about to go live because you can't guess, you know, you don't want the camera people to guess if they're live or not. So you can get really intentional shots when doing live productions, like if the guitar player has a solo and he's ripping it, that you can tell a camera guy to be able to be locked in on him and maybe zoom in on the guitar or what have you. More than anything, this is so helpful just to keep everybody on the same page and know what they're doing at all times. We are using the Blackmagic 4K television studio switcher and it is an SDI input and output switcher, uh, which is really great because we wanna run those long cables. And essentially this is just allowing us to change the various cameras. Remember when I told you that we were pre-recording services during quarantine and I wanted to produce that same look, but you know, I have the control in the editing room uh, where what angles are being selected. So this actually in real time allows us to choose whatever camera we want. And so even for Grow With Video Live, we were able to run SDI cables all the way to other rooms throughout this building and cut to uh, certain cameras reliably, knowing that there isn't gonna be a drop off. Now you don't need a legit switcher like this one. I would say this is pretty like prosumer. You know, we have about 2000 people streaming in on a Sunday. Uh, and so, you know, we really wanted to invest in something strong. But if you're not gonna do more than four camera angles or three camera angles or so, you know, Atomos, uh, the, the actual monitor, you know, brand actually sells a monitor that is touch screen and is also a switcher. And then you can put out a live feed into, you know, whatever live stream uh, solution you're using. But there's so many different options. Also, if you're using a smaller room, Blackmagic makes them with just HDMI, so you can run mirrorless or DSLR cameras all to that switcher. But again, we'll post links in the description below. So just make sure to check out those links and you can see other alternatives as well. Now, the way we actually live stream on Sundays is by using uh, what used to be called Living As One, but they have changed their name to Resi but is, it is a live streaming solution. And I would encourage you if you are a church or maybe you wanna live stream something through YouTube or Facebook uh, at a high level, maybe look into this company, Resi. We'll put, again, we'll post links in the description below. But this encoder allows us to reliably stream our service both to Facebook, YouTube, and our website. And uh, it really doesn't take too much internet to use a hardware encoder. And that's kind of why we use them is because you don't need super strong internet. And so you're not relying on so much bit rate. It actually helps it compress really well um, and is a great solution if you're looking for a live stream and coder but I have seen a lot of people just go straight into like a laptop that's hooked up to internet you know whether that's a wired ethernet or Wi-Fi and you're you know literally a cam link USB from like that Atomos monitor a friend of mine uh, has a church and that's how they actually run their live streams they just run live uh, through a capture card and uh, that is a great solution as well. So a lot of that stuff that I mentioned obviously is a bunch of video stuff. Obviously there's an audio signal coming from the soundboard. And as far as our church, we really wanted to take it pretty serious. I got stuck here, but it's all good. We're gonna keep it rolling. We actually send uh, all the tracks uh, to this computer. So worship, the teaching, it's all live mixed. And so the actual uh, live streaming audience has uh, a good experience. You know, most situations in churches, they are mixing for the room that it, you know, the sound's playing in. There is a difference on the experience of the person who's watching it on their phone or on their TV. And so having a separate way of sending a mix to online is actually pretty wise. But if you're not there, that is all good. You can go straight in from the soundboard, straight into the switcher. And that's how you can get audio consistently no matter what camera angle you're switching to. 
Now I know I didn't go too much in depth about the nitty gritty of all the things. I just wanted you to get a gist of kind of like how we were able to run Grow With Video Live as well as uh, how we live stream here at City Light Church on Sundays. More than anything, if you want a multi-angle live event, it really keeps online viewers engaged rather than just one static shot. And so, you know, having this all hooked up to a switcher really gives that dynamic. Uh, ordering those comms so you can communicate to the camera operators, making sure you're timing those shots and things like that. And then also having ProPresenter, we have the newest version of ProPresenter. That really allows us to send, you know, slides and scriptures or thirds to uh, overlay over whatever video angle is going on. And so more than anything, I just hope this gave you a gist. But if you have any questions about the setup or maybe anything I have left out, make sure you put comments in the description below and I'll try my best to answer those questions. And be sure to check out the playlist where we put all our live production setups from budget from last year's Girl With Video Live where we had to like, we didn't have a building that had this infrastructure to being able to put it on in any building you have. And so make sure you check that out by clicking or tapping the screen and I'll see you in another video. Oh, <laughs> oh,